If you could please introduce yourself. My name is Elvi Musica, and I'm one of four people who receives medical marijuana from the federal government of the United States. The investigative new drug science project going on in the University of Mississippi through NIDA and FDA, and it's been going on since the 70s. Uh, those of us who are in the program are. Our doctors are required to send reports every year. The strange part of this research protocol is that I never see any publications to tell you how well I am doing, so I guess I have to tell you. I guess so. Yes. I've been using marijuana medically since the doctor told me in my early 30s that if I didn't start smoking, I would be blind then. I was very ignorant about marijuana, and I didn't listen. I had to try it out of desperation because nothing else was working for me and I found out that it was the most efficient thing I had ever used of everything they tried on me and it didn't have the horrible side effects like the um, oh some of the pills they gave me um, they took your potassium away and you just wanted to stare at the ceiling things like that it was, didn't work evidently they started the role of surgeries which I would only go there when there was no marijuana. My pressures were up and they said that I would go blind for sure from glaucoma and that I had to stop using that marijuana. But the truth is the only relief I ever got was when I did find marijuana. My depression was enormous because I could no longer work after the second surgery and um, there seemed to be no other road except that of permanent blindness at the time. But people were kind because I, found I had exposed my use of marijuana to my hometown newspaper without my face and with a fictitious name, a pseudo name, I should say, really, because we all agreed on that. And so my story was well known in my town anyway, and people tried to help me. They'd bring me marijuana, but I couldn't buy it either. So the supply was a feast or famine, you know, if somebody <laughs> harvested, they brought me lots, if not, it just wait, and I stretched it as long as I could. But I did find out one thing that was really important throughout this depression, whenever these benefactors would come with marijuana, and after they left, and I used the medicine, and I would find that I didn't think about the darkness of the future that seemed to be inevitable at the time. I would literally start writing music, composing music, I had always composed music in my head, but never took it seriously, never did anything with it. This was great because I was able to copyright like 16, six songs, eight songs during the hardest period of this, when I had left the bank where I used to work and life was becoming extremely poor at every level. Relationships were very insensitive or just didn't want to associate with open pot smokers, which I found particularly amusing since my brother and my sister were both 60s kids who did both of those when I did not do it for recreation, then tried it once with them, felt so guilty I couldn't even realize how good the music sounded, that it had any connection with marijuana. Music then was my first love in life, so that was pretty strange. But no, they uh, definitely were familiar with marijuana and used it my brother, forget it, he used it very regularly. Both my brothers did. So, But the attitude for me using it was um, very different. And I lost a, a lot of friends, um, a lot of connections with my so-called family. Uh, but I also have gained so many new friends and an extended family that that's incomparable to anything else I know. And those who really love me, they're still my friends and we're still related. And some of the new ones I've met since then that are related to me blood-wise, same thing. Some of them avoid me like the plague. They think I might hurt their social status of sorts. And others are very respectful and love me for what I do. So bottom line is you, don't, you have to do what is right for you. And what is right for me is that I ended up with this eye that I lost by 1988, although I had started begging for marijuana back since... 1976, October of 76, October 7 was the first write up with me begging for the authorities to change these rules and that kind of thing. During that 12 year period, seven, uh, 11 year period, it was like 
hell living living a conventional life to a state of, of denial of poverty and and uh, exclusion and but i also met another segment of society that i was not familiar with and those were the people who usually smoke pot as their recreational choice and i found them incredibly fascinating they had jobs but they were jobs that were responsible and fun to do like one of uh or they enjoy their work uh i remember a marine biologist for instance who used to train other people that i got to meet later uh working for the government this person grew beautiful marijuana and understood and spoke about it openly he too made it to the paper at one point uh, stating that he couldn't even understand why you would want to prohibit this when there were so many dangerous drugs that the kids were getting into. So why do this? He, he knew that it was So I got to meet people like that who befriended me and their families are still close families in my heart for me. And by 1988, I got arrested for four little plants. Whoever thought that you had to be arrested to find freedom? Well, I did. Because it just so happens that by the time they arrested me, I had lost all of the sight in this eye. I had, um, my children were both in college. Mm. And uh, they couldn't, I didn't have a job anymore, so they couldn't threaten me with anything else. Whatever damage was being done had already been done. If it damaged my brain, I really haven't noticed. I feel pretty confident with my brain functions <laughs> and uh, what it did damage though was the fact that in 1980 after I lost a bank job and I trained for a job to run a snack bar for the state of Florida which I did successfully but was horrified because all these places were in federal buildings or right next to the sheriff's office and there was no question I had to use marijuana or I would be blind. Mm -hmm. So I, I made a conscious choice, no I don't care if I don't work, I am not going to lose whatever side I have. So when 1988 came and the arrest came, I was ready to fight. Um, however, this had already left me as your tax burden. I was already retired at an unusual early age with no provisions for such retirement. So that's been, a, to this day, its consequences are bad and you're paying for it. Just as we spend more money than I would have ever earned if I had stayed working at that bank, as you spend on surgeries I didn't need, you know, it's all bizarre. So all of these things came to view in the courtroom where my doctor came in with 12 years of health recorded in medical records through the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute, where I'd been going since February of 76, where all the surgeries that failed took place, where I was definitely not only discouraged, but treated by the head of the glaucoma department god bless you mr anderson I, I don't even want to call you a doctor at this time because i was able to bring the evidence that showed that i could bring my pressures from 56 and 49 down to 12 and 14. your clinicians were so unbelievable over that i found out later in court that they wrote 14 and 16. they couldn't even tell the truth then because they were so shocked at how good it was but I went to the Bascom Palmer Institute with medical records that clearly proved that with marijuana, I didn't need surgeries. I could have maintained my job. I could have been fine. Without marijuana, we know the disaster. So all of this was in front of the public because when I got arrested, I knew I couldn't even afford to think of an attorney. I went straight to the press that had been supportive of me when they didn't know my name only. As I said, this time I wasn't afraid of losing anything. There was nothing left to lose. So I went straight to everyone and told them my story repeatedly. The Florida public, much to my shock, was no one was talking about marijuana in Florida in 1988 openly. No one. They were confiscating yachts for finding a roach in those properties. The EA was very busy under Donald Reagan, Ronald Reagan when they weren't bringing in drugs from other countries to buy arms for other countries. They were very busy prosecuting the funding by arresting marijuana smugglers or whoever marijuana people were. And Judge Young was listening to cases all over the country for medical marijuana at the same time. It was an insane time, but most of us in Florida didn't even know about that. I found out after I was arrested because Robert Randall, who is my hero forever, he's the one that absolutely 
showed the federal government through their own federal system that he needed that marijuana that they were growing in Mississippi that they called a research program, which, which was not providing anyone anything that we know of to this day. So obviously they must. He was the first, right? He was the very first that challenged and won, and he came to my rescue immediately. When I got on the media, the first person I heard from, whose name I recognized and who I was glad to hear, because I had heard about Robert Randall. My parents found a little article in the paper about him back in 76, shortly after the doctor had told me I better smoke or go blind, and they brought it to me, and I had it in my scrapbook at the time. So I was really happy to hear from me, him and my doctors and my attorneys were greatly aided by him. The attorney was a civil rights attorney who just is a very dedicated man who really fights for the underdog and I fit perfectly there. At that time, I was extremely lucky to have the aid of uh, Norm Elliott Kent in Fort Lauderdale who uh, just simply was really able to present a case that made it clear to the judge that if I were kept from using marijuana, if I was incarcerated and couldn't use my medicine, it, it would not just be a jail sentence, it would be a sentence of blindness for the rest of my life. And I personally, if I'm ever forced into that situation, would rather be dead. I'm not kidding. One thing is if it happens to me accidentally or nature or whatever, but if I'm forced to lose the other eye, for the simple reason that you have made some rules that are so outrageous that they don't deserve respect from anyone because they have no human respect for any person, let alone the patients. Um, yeah, I would rather be dead. And it, it was that's the way I really felt about it then, too. That wasn't quite exposed by me in those terms at the, at the courthouse. There was enough records to deal with on the, on the testimony of Robert Randall, who described my situation as a deja vu of his same amount of plans there was nothing to fuss about they wanted to do something about it and we wanted the fight we welcomed it we needed to show that this is this is crazy this is marijuana is medicine and the government knows it well now you know now there were three people i met that same day after my court winning i met irving who was also smoking uh, medical marijuana robert and him were the only ones at the time uh, Irving had been the second man allowed from 76 to 82 and then I came in 88 that's how often they gave those little licenses away and my doctor had to put in at least 60 hours of paperwork to which he said that if he had to do that for every patient there would be no way he could possibly care for all his patients and so with the support of the public and I mean they stayed in touch through the radio, through the media, through articles, but mostly radio programs because talk shows were enormous in South Florida with the elderly community especially. And they were behind me. And after that, the government knew, I mean, the people knew that the government had a program that had marijuana. And this woman was really fighting to keep what sight was left as I walked around with these big old telescopes I wore then. Now I'm back to wearing a contact lens. And I'm very happy with that. Very cool. I noticed I said one, you know. I'm looking for another one. I am getting my sight back very slowly in that eye. Really? Oh, yeah. And this eye was a 2400 eye. This eye was almost as bad as this eye at one point. Uh -huh. This eye is now the one I see stars with, the one I, rec I w cross traffic with. I still use my cane when I'm crossing busy streets. I want the traffic to see me too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, as far as... Um, I can see stars. I don't recognize faces. Um, there's something not quite right as far as the focus. Or, and that makes it also very difficult to read. So in some ways, I'm almost like illiterate. But I know I'm not because I read many, many books with the right eye when that eye used to work. And this one had been hurt by a surgery when I was 14 and it didn't work well at all until I started using marijuana at which time, and it was a 2400 eye then, but gradually it became better and better to where today it is a 2200 eye. Don't have a lens in there because they took that out with the cataracts when I was little. You know, that's how they did it then. Uh, so the contact lens makes up for that, and I don't have perfect vision. I never did. I was born with congenital cataracts. But I have more vision in that eye than I ever have in my life, and I have God and marijuana, his creation, to thank for. Mm -hmm. um, there's a tin that comes to me with cigarettes. 
uh, this is not going to be open today, but here it tells you exactly what it is. And it is um, a project from NIDA. And um, this is something I give the Creator thanks for every day. This is to be a religious person and deny a, a sick person their medicine or to fight against them and uh, uh, uphold this prohibition is a great disrespect. Um, to your religion, no matter what your religion is. You're supposed to be kind to one another. So right. this is the oldest medicine known to humanity. This is a part of us so much so that we have endocannabinoid systems to accept this and intertwine with it to better ourselves, to keep our bodies healthier. I'm 70 years old. I had an accident that destroyed my ankle. I hike on a daily basis. I don't have anything but an aspirin for pain in my home, and I never have pain because I use cannabis round the clock, seven days a week, 365 a year. i got to tell you that I hope that the most infinite spirit of love will shine upon each and every one of us to give us the songs or the writings or the poems or the paintings or the words, the means, Whatever it is that it takes to communicate to your legislators to let them know that this is not an acceptable situation, that this is a hideous prohibition that's hurting us environmentally, constitutionally, and morally. To, to have destroyed as many lives as you have with 20 million criminalized citizens uh, is beyond any sanity that I can possibly imagine.